Okay, hey, welcome back to part two of my video about how I organize and structure my files through Lightroom. And part one, if you didn't see that, I recommend you go see it, but you don't need to do it right now. It's not like it has to be seen before this. It will help you understand a few of the things I'm doing in this video, but you can watch it when it's over. I'll make sure I have a link at it at the end of the video and down in the description below. And this is when we're going to talk about a couple of shortcuts and tips and tricks to kind of uh, manage the library module. We'll talk about my actual structure, my naming convention, my folder structure, and then how I kind of move files and folders through that structure in my workflow. Going to mention a little bit about my import process just because that's where the whole structure starts. And as I mentioned in the other video, I don't ever do anything with any file or folder in the finder, including when I load them off my card. Everything goes straight into Lightroom because Lightroom is a digital asset manager and I want it to manage that asset. I don't want to ever have to tr try to figure out where a file goes and I don't lose files. I don't have question marks. And then I've also got a couple of little things I'll throw out and I'll show a few examples of how I kind of move things to an archive drive or things like that. There was one thing I said yesterday that's not 100% true and, and I thought I had to mention the exception. I, I mentioned that Lightroom, you can do everything that you can do in the finder other than delete a folder. Actually, if the folder is completely empty, uh, Lightroom and or the operating system is smart enough to know that you should go ahead and delete it. The problem is you really don't know that. There's no indication whether it was deleted or not. If there's anything at all in that folder, any file at all in that folder, then it stays on your hard drive. That's why it's still best practice to just right click on it, go to Finder or go to Explorer, go over there and make sure it's empty, delete it at that point, go back to Lightroom, it'll have a question mark and then just right click and then remove it. So that's a little bit uh, inaccurate and I thought I had to clarify that because you might try it and go, well, wait a minute, he said it didn't delete a folder. There are rare occasions where it might. Okay, well, let's get into this and hopefully I have some things that'll give you some ideas that'll help you. In the library module, uh, you can see that I have the library module open right now. And we have several sections. I've actually turned off the top section. You'll notice it's the catalog. I don't actually use that section anymore because everything you can do in this, I can just do down in this little menu down here. So I can go down here and all of that stuff is down here. I'd have a video on that if you're interested. This is a really handy little menu down here. So let's uh, go ahead and turn that off. Our folder section is where all this structure is shown. And Lightroom represents it just like your Finder or your Explorer does is in a se series of folders and stuff like that. Each of these represents some device that you've imported photographs from. It can be an SSD, a hard drive, a thumb drive, uh, a network location. If there's a little green a light here or a green square here, that means that is online and so those images are available. And if it's black, that means it's currently offline. You can look at anything that's offline because the previews are stored with your library. So I can go look at an individual folder here, for example, uh, pop down, take a look at this folder. I can see what these images are. Let me just go to grid view. And you can actually add keywords and you can do some other stuff like that to the image. What you can't do is anything in the develop module. Now, if you've saved smart previews of your images, you can actually do some develop module work. I personally don't use smart previews. I haven't quite learned to trust them because my files are so big. I've got a, I've never really seen a problem. I might have to try a little more often, but I have plenty of SSD storage space, so it's never been a problem. If the little triangle here is solid, that means that there are folders within this folder. And if I, you notice when I open this folder up, now this, these little triangles are all, uh, they're made up of a little series of dots. I guess they're trying to make it look gray. And that means that there's no folders within the folder. And, and of course, that's where your images actually are. Now, if I scroll down, you'll see that even in this folder, I have some that have a folder. If I go here, if I open this, you'll see I've created some subfolders within this folder. And I've, so I've organized the images within the folder. In this case, because these images are living in their own folders, when I'm here, I can't see them. Most of the time, I don't, this is how I want it. I want to go here and I don't want it, for example, if I'm up here, I don't want to see all the files that are, all, that are nested in all these subfolders. So I have this setting turned to not show me photos in subfolders. But I might get down to here, and this is one particular shoot, and because I've organized it this way, I might want to see those. So I might want to go turn that on. Now I'm seeing all of the files there's within this, including the three, those in the subfolder down here. Let's go ahead and turn that back off. And we'll close that up. Now, if the drive is offline and I plug it in, 
as soon as it comes online, Lightroom will know about it. Let me just go plug this drive in. And you can see as soon as it's available to the computer, Lightroom knows it's there, just like your Finder or anything else does. You can have images spread across as many devices as you want. Now, obviously, if you get too many, this could start to look cluttered. But you could use different devices for different kinds of images. You could, in my case, a lot of these just have miscellaneous stuff on them. And uh, at some point, I need to do some consolidation. But for right now, this is kind of how I roll. Now, notice over here, if the uh, device is online and it's a local storage device, I don't think it does this for network volumes. It gives you, uh, right now, you can see the size of the device and how much free space there is. If I hover over this, it'll actually pop down a little window, and that'll tell me how many photographs are on that particular device. Gives me a little bit more detail about the free space and its actual size, and gives me even the percentage of free spaces available. And that can be pretty important when you're trying to move a folder from one drive to another, and you just need to make sure there's enough room to put it over there. You can also right click on this and you can change what it shows. For example, you could change it to show the photos in the device. You can have it show the status. This to me doesn't make any sense at all because it's basically telling you the same thing as the little square does on the left side. And if you just don't want it to have anything, you just want to clean it up, you can just have it not show. I personally like to see the disk space. So that's how I do it. So I'm going to go down here to this Lightroom data, which is the uh, flexible size partition on my Macintosh. Uh, internal hard drive or SSD. And this is my working uh, copy. It's got all of my uh, main images in it. And of course, it's with me wherever I go. So anything I'm working on is in this one. If I open this up and kind of open to a couple levels, you'll notice that I have um, Lightroom data folder, my main Lightroom data folder, or my main Lightroom folder. The thing to understand is this top level is actually the same as my hard drive. If I were to look at that in the finder, you'd see it's actually the hard drive. Now, if you go up here, for example, real quick, you'll see that the hard drive isn't showing. If I say right click here and I say show parent folder, then now it'll show the hard drive as a folder. Now, the only reason that that's helpful is you can right click on one a folder and actually make a folder inside the folder. I don't need to see that up here, so we're going to hide the parent. We just click on this, right click on it, and hide it. So it's showing you the structure just like you would see in the finder. It's the operating system. It's the structure that is show. And this is just Lightroom's version of a graphical interface to help you manage that. And if you don't want to see a particular level, it's easy to hide it. You don't need to see every level all the time. So down here, I don't need to see this Lightroom data. And so I'm going to go ahead and say hide this parent. But I can always just close it over here. You can also just click. It's kind of funny. You always go to click the triangle and you don't realize you can actually just click anywhere in the bar. You don't really need to click the triangle itself. If I click on the triangle to open this up, you'll see that I just basically open to one level. If I open a level here and then I close this one up, when I come back, it will remember what was open. If I option or alt click on the triangle to open it, it actually will open the entire hierarchy all the way down. Opens every folder that there is. I'm not sure how useful that would be. Uh, as you can see, it's a lot of hierarchy. Um, but more useful is if you've got some stuff open and you watch, option click on it. When you open it, now it's all closed. So let's say you have this one open and you've got this one open and you've got this one open. And all of a sudden you've got you know this big long scrolling list. Rather than go close them all, just option click on the top one. And now when you start opening it up, everything's collapsed down. Now, the next thing I wanted to show, and this will lead us into the next segment, which is about my actual organization. The filter folders function up here is really quite useful as long as you're using some kind of a good naming convention for your folders. If I use this, I'm only going to search for things that are in the folder's name. Every folder is, has a date of when I took the shots as well as a, some kind of a description of where I was. If I were to, to type bad water, this will actually show me every shoot that I've done in Badwater that I currently have in this database. You can see there I've been to Badwater several times. And the reason I've been there several times is I've really never got the shots that I wanted. First time I went, I didn't even know what I was doing. Uh, neither did anybody in our group. I was actually in a workshop and we, we didn't realize we had to walk out, you know, half a mile to get out to the middle of the, the good salt. And by the time we did, it was a little late. And I actually had one of my best sunrises there. I don't know how the salt was. And then I went back in 2013 and I didn't like the, 
the really deep crevices. Let's uh, make these a little bit bigger. And, the, you know, they had sand on top. And this changes pretty dramatically based on if the basin fills with water. Uh, for example, in 2018 when I went, this is what I got. Um, it had all filled up and everything had flattened out and the, the little structures were just beginning to show up. Went back in 2019 and I started to get some more interesting stuff. I'm headed there in about a week and I'm hoping these are about an inch and a half taller and maybe this is smoothed out from the, and then obviously looking for that uh, great sunset I'm trying to get. So anyway, kind of got sidetracked, sorry. So this can be very useful. And the key to that, if you want it to be useful, is part of the structure, and that's my naming structure at, at my organization. Now, take this for what it might apply to you. For example, if you're a portrait photographer, instead of a location, if you were to put the sitting date and the customer's last name, and you might even add something like underscore two kids or, you know, something, anything that will help you locate things quickly. Let's go to this and show this folder in the finder. Um, right here, and we'll have to do our little trick here to get the finder to show up. And you'll notice when I open this folder that the images in the folder all share the same name as the folder name. So this means we can search in the library filter to find actual images using the same thought. And it also has the original file number that was created by the camera. Now when you import the images, you know, there's a lot of options. You could use a sequential number and replace these numbers, but I thought, well, that means I'm going to have hundreds of files with one and two and three and four. And this gives me somewhat of a uniqueness. Yeah, there's probably another 7877 there from another camera that I shot, or there could be, but there's only going to be a few of them. There's not going to be, you know, hundreds of them. Now, I've actually had to use this a couple of times because I was trying to figure out where I had moved a file to. But I looked up the number. I saw I had a blank spot like between 87 or whatever. And so I knew that the one I was looking for was a particular number. So then the library filter actually found it. And what had happened is as I was trying to move it, I'd accidentally dropped it in another folder and didn't notice. So I really didn't know where it had ended up. So uh, I've actually found that useful on a few occasions. All right, back to Lightroom. So my organization is pretty straightforward. Every year is its own year. And if you go up here, you will see that uh, in one case, I actually split that into two folders. One thing I try to do is make sure that if I open a folder, I don't get a list that's this huge scrolling list. So if there's too many, I'll break it up. That's And then inside each year are the different shoots. And let's see if we can go to a more recent year here. So for example, you'll see when I was at Death Valley last year, I did two shoots on the 29th of January. One of them was at Badwater, one of them was at Mesquite Dunes. I barely brought these files into Lightroom. They haven't been processed because Lightroom just barely began to support one of my cameras, uh, my IQ4150. So at this point, I've done everything over in Capture One with these files. I'm excited to actually get them into Lightroom finally. So they share the same name and the, and the number's different. And then they're organized by year. And then what I'll do is when I'm working on a file, if I decide that I like it, well, you notice... I'm starting to use color codes for that a little bit. So that means inside this folder is something that I, I'm interested in. And I use yellow. It actually would be green, but I use yellow to indicate it's for a tutorial. So I could click on this folder. And go, oh, yeah, I, I like this shot. And I've actually worked on it. And I think it's to the point, uh, this has actually gone through Photoshop. I've used my sharpening routine. So what I'm going to do is I'm ready to move this into the next level. And that's what these folders are at the top. So this would go next into my gallery work folder. So I would just basically click it, drag it, and drop it up there. And now it's in my gallery work folder. So let's say that I've worked this one and I feel I'm really pretty comfortable with it. So my next step is to say, okay, it's, you know, in that case, I would probably, uh, first of all, make the label go blue. And let's just pop the toolbar up here. And it already is blue. So that means I'm ready to go to the next step. The next step is to make a print. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to drop it into gallery ready to print. Okay. And I'm going to print a 24 by 30 print uh, just to examine how the sharpness to make sure that it'll, it'll print 
large and I'll help that'll help me decide the largest size I would make available. Some of my images are available up to 90 inches. If the file won't hold up, I'll, you know, they might only be available some of my older images you can only buy in a 40 inch print. All right. And once I've made the print, which I've done on this one, I'm ready to put it in the gallery. Now what I've got to do is do a couple steps. I've got to make a small JPEG to go on my website. I've got to usually come up with a name for it. And sometimes I'm not even sure which category it's ready to go in. So that's what this ready for category is. So I'm going to drag it up there. And you notice I'm dragging the whole folder and I'm, it's moving the folder on my hard drive. I don't have to go to the finder to put it into this location. And now these are ones that I'm, as soon as I decide, for example, this one, I'm still debating if I like it or not. But this one, for example, this will be, this will be an open edition. It's a nice shot, would be a nice accent piece. What I would have to do is make a, a JPEG that would go on my website to make it available. And then it's going to get dropped into either open edition or limited edition. In this case, it would be open edition. So that's kind of how things travel through my workflow. You'll notice that each image in these, or each folder in these, let's go to limited edition. Each folder has only one image in it, in my case. There's usually several versions of that image in the folder. And sometimes there's other things related to it. You'll notice here that this one's color coded purple. Purple is my color code for master file. So basically once it goes into my gallery and is available for purchase, it's going to have a purple. And if I go through these, you'll see that every one of these has a uh, purple image. And it's always usually the first one. I usually drag it over. So that way I can go through and see them. Now, the one other nice thing about purple is I do have another thing that I've done, which I really like. If I go to my little menu down here and I go to my collection set finals, you'll see that what I get here is all of my basically purple images, all of the ones that are in my gallery, either open edition, closed edition. Uh, or I mean limited edition. And how that works is pretty simple. The qualification to be, this is a smart collection, and the qualification to be in the smart collection is it has to be in the folder, and it has to be purple. If we go down and look at that real quick, let's just uh, pop down collections, and we go to that, and I'm gonna go to edit smart collection, and you'll see it has to be in the folder. In limited edition, it has to be purple. Very simple smart collection. So as soon as I move a new image that I've just finished into one of those folders, limited edition or open edition, it will automatically appear in this collection set because of the way that I've set it up. Next, I would like to just briefly talk about my import process. As I mentioned, my entire structure starts at import. I don't believe in using the finder to do that because I think it just adds steps that aren't necessary and it's pretty critical. I'm going to add a folder here for that's for 2020. I can add one subfolder level when I import my files, but I can't add a parent to that. And so I need to create my 2020 folder. Unfortunately, my Death Valley trips was postponed a month because of getting sick. So we're just gonna create a folder inside of that. We'll call it 2020. And now we've got a place to import the folder. Now I'm gonna hit import. I've found an old card sitting around that has some pictures on it. And you'll notice this one is, uh, already been imported, so that's actually the one that ended up going into my gallery or uh, set. So when I copy these to, from the card, uh, I'm if I need to do it fast, I'll use embedded in sidecar. 500 Sony A7R4 files takes between a minute and a half and three to four minutes, depending on how fast your card is. It takes about exactly the same amount of time as it does if you just drag them over from the finder. And so it doesn't really save anything. If you want to use, make bigger previews, you can. This will take about 10 minutes for that on a 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro 8-core. Uh, depends on the computer how long it'll take, but this is the part that takes the time. Now understand that Lightroom is doing both things at the same time. It really basically sends a command to the operating system to copy them from the card and to give them a name. And then it gives you a progress indicator of how that progress is moving along. It's not actually the one doing the work. And then the build previews, it gives you another progress indicator. As soon as the one progress indicator is done, the files have already been moved over. But a lot of times you just want to make sure it's done. So you might do that in two steps. Like I said, this will take about, it takes about 10 minutes on my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Always use this because the card's being used for several shoots during a trip. I always make a second copy just so when I'm done, I've got three copies on three different devices. And, Worst case scenario, one of them should make it home. 
The naming convention is the critical part. You notice that I've got it set to, let's just go real quick. Some custom text, file number suffix. Now I did mention that the year is part of that custom text and I could put it in automatically, but I'll show you why I don't in just a second. So let's say that this uh, shoot was from Badwater that I took next week. So we're just gonna put in a date and we'll call it Badwater. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drag, I'm gonna highlight that and copy it. And that's why I manually type it in because you wouldn't be able to copy the date. I will apply a metadata preset, which will be the copyright. I don't have that set yet. And I will usually have to put in one keyword. In this case, I will put in bad water. And there will be about 10 keywords associated with each of these files on import because of the way my hierarchy is built. That's what I talked about in my keywording video. Now the key to get this in the right place is to make sure I click into subfolder. I will paste the name in. So what Lightroom is gonna do is make a subfolder and to make sure it goes in the right place, you just have to pay a little bit of attention. So I want it in my main Lightroom library. I'm gonna open that and I want it inside my 2020 folder. And as soon as I click and highlight this folder, you can see that it's going to create a folder. That's what the little plus icon means. Inside that folder, that's gonna be the folder's name and it's gonna put all those images inside that folder and name them all at the same time. So I'm doing all this in one step, it takes me what, 20, 30 seconds to set this up, and then I'm done. Uh, it, uh, if I had to do it to the finder, now I'm having to do a double step, and I could still do the same thing. I could drag them over, and I could do this, but there's really no point because it doesn't save anything. It takes a little more time, and it's not safer. So that's kind of the basic of my import process, and so you can see right here, my structure starts at the very beginning. The next thing I want to cover is my use of the color labels. I did mention that. If we go up under metadata and we go to color label set and we'll go to my preset, let's just go to edit. You'll see that I have my I've renamed mine and I've got a full video on uh, labels and stars and quite extensive on how to actually utilize those. Red, it means I reject it. Sometimes I also use the unpick flag for that. Possible means it's something that I've decided I want to look at, but I'm, I didn't do any work on it at all. Other than real rough. Green means I'm actually working on an image. And if you go to my gallery work, as we'll do in a minute, there'll be quite a few images that are green. And once I think I'm ready to print a test print, uh, I turn it to blue. And of course, once it moves into my gallery, then it is changed to purple. So if you look at my gallery work, uh, you'll see if I start looking at a few images here, for example, this one's blue, this one's green. You can see the differences. I was taking the rock out and I'm still just not deciding. I might actually put the rock back in because I don't know, rock doesn't bother me that much. So if I go through each of these folders, there's gonna be either a green or a yellow or a blue one. And of course, if we go to the gallery ready to print, there should be a blue one in each of those. And then uh, if you go into some of the folders, there probably aren't too many red ones because those get moved out onto my, uh, my archive hard drive pretty quickly. Uh, and a lot of times, uh, this is where you'll see a lot of yellow ones when I go through here. So kind of my first glance through, I will make uh, ones that I'm interested in yellow. Um, so that's kind of, you know, I, I don't use star ratings very much. I used to use star ratings, but I like the color label a little better. And it's a little deceiving because it's not a color label. So yellow, uh, if you watch the other video, yellow is uh, what it starts out as, but you can call it anything you want. And so yellow to me just represents, I, I want to look at it later. Purple represents it's in my gallery. And I can search based on that. And that's kind of why I like the labels. They're just a little more visually obvious. I don't need to do, have the stars or anything showing in my, screen here you notice how clean all this is i don't need to have any of that showing uh, and i can still see the color label okay just a couple other things really quick and this i want to show just to show how easy it is to organize your stuff and move it around so this la perouse folder here this is a shoot that i did i've got the images off they're already in my website from that location and i'm really done with all these now i usually don't throw anything away but i do want to get it off my main working drive onto an archive which is up in this ssd and if i open this up and then i go to that you'll see that i have a 2018 folder so all i've got to do is drag this up to here and drop it and lightroom will actually let's drop this down lightroom will actually move the folder and you get a little indicator up a uh, indicator up here in the process of moving it's actually basically it told the operating system to copy all those files in that folder over to another hard drive same thing as if you drag it in the finder it's not not magic it's it's not that's one of the easiest things that a programmer can write 
thing about it, every program that you use has the ability to do something with folders like create them and things like that. So nothing really magic about what the finder does. And uh, this is a lot easier than going to the finder and doing it because it's all automatic. So now this folder is up here, it's gone from here. And you'll notice that uh, it's right there, all those pictures. Now, if there's anything else in this folder that like, you know, that's not a, not a photograph, and in this case, there probably is because this was opened in uh, Capture One. It moves the whole folder, even if it's not a photograph. It just, it's basically the instruction to the operating system is move this folder. And so it's going to move anything else that's in the folder as well. So the last thing I thought I would show is going the other direction. This is my archive folder, and it's off on a secondary drive. And, you know, I go through these once in a while. There's still a lot of images, and I might find one I want to work on a little bit more. In the case of this one here, you can see this shot that I took of the North Rim. This stack here contains all the originals of that, plus a couple of merge merges. And so it's, it goes from here to here. So I want to move those over to my working uh, folder that we had a few minutes ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to click all of those and highlight them. I'm going to right click on this and go to rename. And I'm just going to co copy that and then cancel it. And I'm going to go down to my um, main, drive, main SSD here in my library. Remember, we had this gallery work. And I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say, create a folder inside gallery work for me. I'm going to paste that name in there and I'm going to put include selected photos and I'm going to hit create. And what's going to happen is Lightroom is going to tell the operating system to make a folder inside a gallery work and then to move the files from this hard drive over into this hard drive inside that folder. I mean, that's as easy as it is. I didn't have to drag or drop anything. And if we go here, here's our North Rim folder, and there's the eight files we just moved. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully this gives you some ideas on uh, how powerful the, the asset management portion of Lightroom is. A lot of people say, well, it's not really a file browser. Well, no, it's not. It's not intended to browse every files. That definitely doesn't mean it doesn't have the capability of managing its own assets within the confines of the operating system. Because there's nothing magic about that. It's, you know, like every software program out there has to do it to some degree. And they're actually, the libraries they use are pretty straightforward. Uh, the only time I've ever had a problem is when I accidentally let go of the mouse when I'm moving something over and I'm not onto the folder I want yet. That's, you know, that, and I've done that in the Finder too, though. It's not like it's a light, that's a Lightroom problem. Okay, well, that about wraps it up. I hope that was helpful. I hope you understood things. I try to not get too wordy, but I get excited about some of this stuff and tend to ramble on once in a while. If you have any questions about anything I said or if you think I need to clarify something, please feel free to drop a comment below. If you have ideas that you use in the way you organize your structure, I'd love to hear about them. Uh, uh, it's really cool. And other readers could notice uh, there's, like I said, there's a hundred ways to do this and there's no right and wrong way. It's just whatever works and whatever is efficient. The whole, whole thing with Lightroom is you're trying to make your workflow efficient. And that's really our goal. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed down there. And I uh, appreciate you doing a like. Uh, YouTube, apparently, uh, you know, I don't like the way the like thing works because it adds you it every time you like a video it adds it to this list of videos you like and really i thought it was supposed to be just you liked it and that's all it should be so a lot of people don't hit like on a lot of videos after they figure that out but anyway i'd appreciate a like down there if you if you feel like it and until next time hey see ya